When there are innocent people nearby, you gotta find the opportunity and move in to take the shot that you can take to end the threat. If you wanna keep your shooting skills primed, you have to regularly dry fire. Manus X is the best dry fire tool available to help you to stay sharp all the time. I use it every week. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Charlotte, North Carolina. It's an officer-involved incident that we have multiple angles of on body cams. And we're gonna see one officer in particular who uses his attitude, skills, and plan to keep a victim safe. Background news story on this one is that police are responding to reports of a home invasion. And when they get there, this guy is gonna come out with a woman who is gonna say she's pregnant and they are holding, uh, they are gonna watch him take her hostage and try to get away. There's a lot of body cams here. We have three different angles. Let's listen in, see what happens. Then we'll come back and learn some lessons. He's got a gun! He's got a gun! Got gun Drop it! Drop it! Drop that gun! Drop that gun now! I got you, Chef. Get covered, get covered! Drop that gun! News story says that he was shot in the left uh, torso, had a collapsed lung. Uh, the pregnant woman was not injured in this one at all. And a very commendable thing here, the officers do finally get him in cuffs. They get a hold of his gun. Then they do life-saving first aid on him, find out where the bullet wounds are and get him patched up. And that is where this one ends. Boy, that officer did a really fantastic job, in my opinion. If you appreciate the lessons that you get here every day at Active Self Protection, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss a lesson. Out of today's video, I want first and foremost to talk about the incredible job that law enforcement does in the vast majority of instances in the United States. Secondly, I wanna talk about when to draw the firearm and threaten with it and when to use it. And third, I wanna talk about getting the shot that you want and closing if you have to, to end the threat. So first off, I think it's really worthwhile talking about how commendable these officers are, that they respond to this home invasion call and this guy comes out with a woman, you know, holding her hostage. I don't think they knew that she was pregnant at the time, but they're working really hard to take care of her and to not have to shoot anybody. And police officers do an incredible job. By and large, you know, the, the vast majority of law enforcement officers in the United States are incredible people doing a difficult job 
for sometimes ungrateful folk, and I just want to say how much I respect the work that they do. Now, you're going to see them here and, and trying in a, a very rapidly evolving environment. Look at the muzzle awareness and discipline here that this officer is trying not to point guns at innocent people. He's trying to move effectively, and we see that from all the badge cams. Muzzle discipline, incredibly important in a, a, you know, in a dynamic incident like this, when things are changing all the time, you still got to point your firearm in a safe direction at all the time because bad things happen when you don't. Now, notice he's trying to get into a better position here. In real life gunfights, you're not just standing on a square range and pointing at a stationary target. In reality, everyone's moving and there are good people between you and the threat, perhaps, and you got to get a better angle so that you have a safe direction to point your firearm in so that you're not endangering the people around you. Excellent work here of getting in those positions and not endangering innocent people and not taking the wrong shot. Now, as they're trying to get into a good position here, I want to notice that they're working together as a team and they are communicating. When you got friendlies, whether that's law enforcement officers, your partner, your spouse, whatever, communicating effectively to end the threat is an excellent and important part of things. Now, what we're going to see here is we're going to see on the first officer's body cam the correct movement. You know, he had a very difficult shot here in the beginning, and so he moved in and got that right shot, and then once he got the right shot, then they pursued it till its end. Now, let's think about movement into the shot from this second angle, as they are looking for a good shot on this guy. Very difficult with pistols at this kind of distance, friends, in reality. So, what we're going to going to see here is the officer to our right on the, the right of the screen is going to get where he's thinking about a spot and you're going to see him there and he's actually got his pistol mounted light down. Now that's a good strategy that again he's trying to light things up without pointing a gun where he doesn't want to point it. This is a good point for us to talk about pistol mounted lights. I do of course recommend all police officers if their department uh, allows it because they're chasing bad guys into dark places all the time. Have a pistol mounted light at all times and for CCW holders and homeowners as well having uh, you know a pistol on your home defense light is very very useful because of situations where you know at night somebody invades your home or is on your property those kind of things. Things, but I'm not so sure about use in CCW. Now notice, let's talk about the movement here. You see how far the officer is. I'm going to guess here and estimate he's about eight to nine yards away. And eight to nine yards on an occluded target with an innocent in between is an incredibly difficult shot. And of course, you'd want to get as close as you possibly can to maximize your margin for success here and give him the best shot he possibly can. So what he's going to do is he's going to get in and we're going to see that first shot go off right about there. So instead of at about nine yards, he gets him in very quickly and gets that shot from about four yards. That's a much more doable shot than the longer one. So sometimes you got to move in. Now, of course, as a self-defender, not as a law enforcement officer, there's not going to be a whole lot of instances where you're going to have to move into a threat in order to shoot it well, but you might in a counter ambush situation or something like that. So this is an applicable skill as well, not necessarily shooting while moving in, but getting into a closer position and then stabilizing and taking the shot could be very, very helpful and very important. And it was excellent here to minimize the risk to to the innocents. Now we go to the body cam of the officer who actually took the, the, the first shot here. And we're going to see him here. It kind of cuts in a couple of spots. That's what the PD gave out like there. But you're going to see him move in here. And we can see when he takes the first shot is when she moves. You notice he's getting in, getting in, getting in. And that first shot goes off when she gets down. He tells her, get out of the way, get out of the way. And she ducks away. And that's when the shot goes off. And he got a good look there. And therefore, he had some margin for victory in order to get that shot off. Friends, I'm telling you, you got to know when the right time to take the shot is when you have enough sight picture and you can guarantee a hit, especially when there's uh, others in the area where you absolutely have to have that hit. Fast is fine, but accuracy is final, as was attributed to Wyatt Earp. And so then they, they do a very commendable thing here is they got to get this guy into custody. Go watch the original. I've linked it in the description and you can hear him screaming for the gun because the gun's lost in the weeds and stuff down below him. They finally get him in cuffs. And once they get him in cuffs, they get him out here and they start first aid. I do think first aid skills are important for all self-defenders. Can't learn those on YouTube. Got to go take a class for those for sure and have the right equipment on you. And these officers did. Now, a couple times they're like, hey, go get the stuff out of my car or whatever. And I get that, you know, an officer has an awful lot of stuff on them. Can't carry everything, but I do recommend an ankle first aid kit, something on the belt, something on the, the body armor or something like that. And for all self-defenders to have first aid skills and first aid equipment to save a life, not necessarily of a perp in this instance, but what happens if it was a loved one or the intended victim or those kind of things that was hurt. Having those first aid skills is important. And another reason I admire law enforcement officers is how hard they work to save this guy's life. They covered their ASP.